In one of the first studies of Iraqi public opinion after the U.S.-led invasion of March 2003, the polling firm Gallup asked Iraqis their thoughts on the Bush administration's motives for going to war. One percent of Iraqis said they believed the motive was to establish democracy. Slightly more, five percent, said to assist the Iraqi people. But far in the lead was the answer they got, 43 percent, quote, to rob Iraq's oil. Well, with the four-year mark of the Iraq war less than a month away, the answer may come into clearer view. After a long negotiation process involving U.S. officials, the Iraqi government is considering a new oil law that would establish a framework for managing the third largest oil reserves in the world. What would this new law mean for Iraq? Well, with me now in Washington is Ra'ed Jarrar. He is the Iraq Project Director for Global Exchange. And he's obtained a copy of the proposed oil law, which he translated from Arabic and posted on his website, right in the middle, .blogspot.com. Antonia Yuhas is also with us on the telephone. She's written extensively about the economic side of the U.S. occupation of Iraq and is author of the book, The Bush Agenda, Invading the World One Economy at a Time. Antonia is currently a Tarbell Fellow at Oil Change International. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Ed Girard, first, how did you get this document? The document was leaked by Professor Fuad Al-Amir and published on a website called al-ghad, al-ghad.org. There are different, uh, different copies of it. Some of it are scanned and others are the original uh, document, but it just hit the internet last week. And explain what it says now that you've finished translating it. There are three major points that I think we should talk about. Financially, it legalizes uh, very unfair uh, types of contracts that will put Iraq in uh, very long-term uh, contracts that can go up to 35 years. And uh, the second point is uh, concerning Iraq's sovereignty. Uh, Iraq will not be capable of um, controlling the levels, uh, the limits of uh, production, uh, which means that Iraq cannot be a part of OPEC anymore. And um, Iraq will have this um, uh, very complicated um, institution called the Federal Oil and Gas uh, Council that will have representatives from the foreign oil companies on, on the board of it. So representatives from, let's say, ExxonMobil and Shell and uh, British Petroleum will be on the federal board of Iraq uh, approving their own contracts. And the third point is uh, the, the point about keeping Iraq's unity. The law um, uh, authorizes all of the regional and small provinces authorities. They will, it will give them the final say to deal with the, with the oil instead of giving this final say to the central federal government. So uh, it will open the doors for splitting Iraq into three uh, regions or even uh, maybe three states in the very near future. Antonio Yuhas, what is the significance of this for Western oil companies? The law certainly opens the door to U.S. oil companies and the Bush administration winning a very large uh, piece of their objective of going to war in Iraq, at least <clears throat> winning it on paper. Um, the law does <clears throat> almost word for word what was laid out in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Baker Hamilton recommendations uh, to turn Iraq's nationalized oil system, the model that 90 percent of the world's oil uh, is governed by, uh, take its nationalized oil system and turn it into a commercial system fully open to foreign corporate investment on terms as of yet to be decided. Basically, every level of, uh, of the oil industry will be opened to private foreign companies. And as Raed uh, said, it introduces this very unique model, which is uh, that ultimate decision making on contracts rests with a new council to be set up in Iraq. And sitting on that council will be representatives, executives in fact, of oil companies, both foreign and domestic. And this council, the new um, oil and gas council, is going to be the decision-making body to determine what kind of contract uh, the Iraqis can sign. And all contract models are still on the table, yet to be determined. I think that's left vague or open so that the uh, very necessary criticism to earlier drafts of the law, which included specifically production sharing agreements, uh, might be quieted. 
Um, but the law definitely sets up a very dangerous uh, uh, setup for Iraq's future economic stability, economic development, and certainly sets the stage for a tremendous amount of increased hostility and violence uh, uh, to U.S. soldiers positioned on the ground as being seen as the implementers of this uh, oil hijack. Um, no one in Iraq knows about the law. The law has been kept in a very low profile and there is a huge propaganda campaign by the government trying to portray the law as great and good for Iraq and good for, uh, a law that will turn Iraq into heaven on earth because it will bring all of the foreign investments. Even parliamentarians in the Iraqi uh, government, uh, the ones who will have the final say to pass this law, haven't received a copy of this law yet. I sent them the copy three or four days ago. And finally, Antonia, who has the largest oil reserves in the world, the top three? Uh, Saudi Arabia is one, Iraq is two, Iran is three, and I think in that list, uh, particularly obviously Iraq and Iran, you can see pretty clearly uh, a, a key focus uh, for the Bush administration in its uh, remaining years in office. But controlling the, the second and third largest oil reserves in the world also has a tremendous amount to do with imperial power and global power uh, that the Bush administration wants. Uh, controlling that oil denies it to other countries that want it, like China and India, uh, countries that the, the Bush administration now sees itself in rivalry to. We have to pull back this curtain over that three-letter word oil and expose this agenda. You know, corporate and oil interests are part and parcel to government interests. And I definitely uh, think that if we in the United States want to end the war in Iraq and want to prevent another war in Iran. The four-year anniversary of the war coming up March 19th is a critically important opportunity to do that and in the lead-up to that anniversary uh, uh, to really target our attention on uh, demanding that our members of Congress defund the war and that uh, we direct our attention and our, and our protest energy uh, on revealing this oil agenda. And Tony, you also want to thank you for being with us. Torbell Fellow at the Oil Change International, author of The Bush Agenda, Invading the World One Economy at a Time, and Ra'ed Gerar in Washington, D.C., uh, is the Iraq Project Director for Global Exchange. His blog is ra'edinthemiddle.blogspot.com.